excuse me while I whip this out. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever the case may be. Sorry, I'm so late today. Uh, so I, I was about to go to bed last night. I was about to go to bed. And I got a notification that CryptoFace was streaming. And when CryptoFace is streaming, I'm trading. And so <laughs> he got on. And so from 2 a.m. till 6 a.m., I was night trading Bitcoin. And uh, very, very good night. Very good night. CryptoFace knows what he's doing. So uh, so I definitely, uh, I, he's, he's the the trading guru for me. So um, definitely uh, needed to take advantage of that. And then I had to get up and go get a couch. My, We had already set up this appointment with a, uh, we found this couch on OfferUp. Huge. Like my, my, my wife's been looking for a couch like on OfferUp because because our couch is uncomfortable. I told you about this. And She's been looking for like seven years and every once in a while, she'll see. And then she saw this one couch and she's like, that's that couch. That's the couch. And so she's like, she, she's like, can I get it? Can I get it? And I'm like, get it. And it's fantastic when you get something on offer up. We had this conversation, right? Like you get used furniture and stuff. <clears throat> Brand new furniture is stupid expensive. This particular couch that we got, I'll show you a picture. This particular, uh, I, I'm always saying that that furniture is stupid expensive. This couch, brand new, uh, is is. Let's go a, a step further. It's retarded expensive. <laughs> it's like mother flipping. Hold on, let me let me drag it over here. Look at this thing. In the yeah, Isaac's in the background. It is nine and a half feet long. It is like I don't know, four feet wide, some three, four. I, it is. It's as wide as a twin bed. This thing new was like fifteen thousand dollars. That's like I'm always like, oh man, couches are like four or five thousand dollars. I'm like. $15,000 for a couch. Look at the size of that thing. We have a big living room, and that thing takes up half of it. The, that ottoman. So this guy on OfferUp, he just he was trying to close his storage unit. So he had this. He had this ottoman, which I looked it up. This ottoman, which he threw in for free, is like a $1,200 ottoman. <laughs> I'm like telling you about the good deals we got. So I'm just going to tell you, we paid $1,100 for this thing. $1,100. <laughs> the Ottoman is a $1,200 Ottoman. We got the Ottoman. We got the couch. And check this out. Because it was in the storage unit and he wanted to get rid of it, he threw in this mahogany table. I don't even know how much that thing costs, but it was free. We don't have room for it, oh my God. but it was free. <laughs> and... Uh, because they were in there, he threw in uh, some folding chairs that were, you know, like brand new folding chairs. So that's not an ottoman. That's a roll around bed. <laughs> oh, no. Did did Biden manage to, to give a speech? I can bring you an ottoman for free. An ottoman or the foreskin of an ottoman? Oh. All right. Let's not do the flashbacks. But yeah, pretty, uh, pretty, pretty. So anyways. Um, my, my wife, you know, my wife's like, I think you're going to need some help. I'm like, it's a couch. I've lifted a hundred couches in my life. They're not that heavy. I don't know what yeah. this couch was made out of, but holy crap, that thing was heavy. So I had to go and rent a truck and we had to drive down there and then, you know, do all the thing. And somehow or another, they got this into a second floor storage unit with oh my gosh it was so it because it's so heavy it's so long and it's so wide it was like we had to like tilt it up like more than 45 degrees to get it around the corner and 
man alive. It was crazy. It was crazy. That's cheaper than Ikea. It's Mikea. <laughs> yeah, there's a little, you know, there's a couple of tears in the fabric, but I'm going to sew those up. But I'm like, I got five kids. That thing's going to get thrashed anyways. And I'm, I would never spend $15,000 on a brand new couch because I have five kids and it's going to get thrashed anyways. But look at that thing. Other than it's got two tears in it, which I'm going to stitch myself. And other than that, it's practic it looks brand new. It's it's like it was his parents. So this dude bought it for his parents. And then his parents moved. And so he put it in storage because like nobody else could use it. And it's been in storage for five years, all wrapped up, so it's not all covered in dust mites or anything. And so Man, deal of the century, deal of the century. And my wife's like, it can be our anniversary present. I'm like, happy anniversary. <laughs> uh, I'll get her something else. Don't worry about it. Um, but dang, yeah, man, stoked. No. Finally. For the, you know how long? It's been 15 years okay. since I had a comfortable couch to sit on in my house. No. Oh. I mean, God bless Jill's parents, but the, the couch before. the couch we inherited from them is... I hated sitting on it. I, I hated sitting on it. See that little... Uh, you, you can't... Well, maybe you can't see it. See in the corner? This, this is my little... Uh, my lazy boy recliner my mom bought for me because she's like, you need something comfortable to sit on. So she bought me a lazy boy for my birthday. Like like 14 years ago, like a year into me not having anywhere to sit because I hated that couch. <laughs> That's how cheap I am. I've hated this couch for 15 years and I'm like, whatever, it's a couch. We have a couch. <laughs> uh, but yes, yes, I admit, I fully, ad why is there Taco Bell sauce under my freaking chair? Why are you complaining? Cause I'm on a rocker. This thing like squeak. Oh, it's Jack in the Box. That could have squirted all over the carpet. Yes, yeah, why not? <laughs> Dial S for some. <laughs> oh yeah, the topic of the day. DC Comics is gay. Let's get to that story, shall we? DC to launch DC Pride yeah. anthology comic and more in June. More June onwards. I'm going to uh, I'm going to retake the brand. Hashtag Pride is a sin. Yeah, I said it. I'm gonna say it again. I'm gonna say it June first. I'm gonna say it June second. I'm gonna say it every day. Pride is a sin. And not even just talking about this pride. I'm just talking about pride in general. No, not good. <sighs> what is happening with DC? What is what is their purpose here? Let's read it. Let's read the story. June is celebrated as the Pride Month to honor the 1969 Stonewall Uprising. What? What the heck is the 1969 Stonewall Uprising in Manhattan? All right. Sorry. I've just... I I didn't realize that there was a particular celebratory thingamabob about something or other. Stonewall riots served as a catalyst this day in history. Gosh dang stupid Google ads. The Stonewall riots, also called the Stonewall Uprising, began in the early hours of June 28th, 1960. Go away! 69. When New York City police raided the Stonewall Inn, a gay club located in Greenwich Village in New York City. The raid sparked a riot among bar patrons and neighborhood residents as police roughly hauled employees and patrons out of the bar, leading to six days of protest and violent clashes with law enforcement outside the bar on Christopher Street. In neighboring streets and in nearby Christopher Park, the Stonewall riots served as a catalyst for the gay rights movement in the United States and around the world. Constant raids at gay bars. The 1960s and preceding decades were not welcoming to time, not welcoming times for 
lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender Americans. For instance, solicitation of same-sex relations was illegal in New York City. For such reasons, LGBT individuals flocked to gay bars and clubs, places of refuge, where could, they could express themselves openly and socialize without worry. However, the New York State Liquor Authority... All right, so... There was a riot. I didn't. I never. Did anybody know about this? You guys hear about this? So it's Gay History Month. It, it's funny because I've heard about Gay History Month over and over and over and over again, but nobody's ever mentioned that it had a catalyst in a a riot. I guess that's why the left always likes to use riots to uh, to change things because they think it does. Apparently, it does. Hey. Let's have a riot, and we can change. <sighs> mm. It happened in the back parking lot of a pizza hut. Uh, Stonewall was a gay club in New York. I just read that. Huh? A gay nightclub got raided and gays rioted. The scrap yeah, Stonewall. Da, 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 da. I don't know the details. Stonewall. Nope, not Stonewall Jackson. All right, let's read. Uh, da, 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 which was a tipping point for gay liberation in the United States. And today, DC announced DC Pride, a 80 page anthology comic featuring LGBTQIA plus ABCDWXYD characters from across the DC universe and Crush and Lobo, a new eight issue miniseries written by Mariko Tamaki. Oh, is she that 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 one that wrote herself into the star fired thing? Uh, with art by somebody, somebody. Question Global launched da, 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 series nine pride theme variant covers two and shoe. This okay, here's the thing that <laughs> I don't care. These characters are all gay. Jim drew them looking all cool and, and heroic and powerful. This is the thing that I go. All right, this is gay. Look at the actually. Uh, made Lobo look a little gay, just a little gay. But look at Superman. The creeps are gone. Oh, wait, Superman. Superman is not gay. I don't care who's writing Superman. I don't care what universe we're talking about. But look how they drew him. I mean, the the rainbow flag, is, you don't even have to have him holding that flag to look at him and be like, bruh. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, and uh, yeah, the night, Nightwing, not, not the most masculine pose for Nightwing either. And I don't get the sachet Shantae pose for... Wonder Girl. It, you know what? It 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 smacks of pandering to me. I bet you these are all straight artists, and they're like, they were told, "Hey, do you want to do a comic cover for Gay Pride Month?" And they're like, "Sure." And it's like, "Okay, we'll do some stereotypically typically gay poses for our characters." <laughs> and he's like, I could have one girl doing the sachet. How's that? That gonna that that's good. Uh, I I'm not even. Eh. And yeah, there's that starfire. <laughs> Still cracks me up. All right, all right. Uh, man, I was so tired. I was so tired. This gave me a little boost of of just ridiculousness. <laughs> So, I don't know. Um, I mean, look. DC can do whatever it wants. It's it's their company. They want to go, like, full bore down, down the LGBT thing. Go ahead. It's your company. I'm, I'm kind of over it. Uh, the covers are awful. I know. Superman might be gay, worn red underwear for 70 years. Hey, hey, the red underwear was a symbol of manliness, you know, 70 years ago. 
he was uh the the underwear on the outside it was supposed to symbolize the strong man the like the people the the strong you know the strong man archetype the people would like go to the circus and you see the strong man and he's got like the underwear and he's lifting 500 pounds whatever it is whatever um and so that's why that's why he was designed like that because it was iconic at the time i don't know it translates into the modern vernacular but uh i don't know i like the red underwear on the outside is that a problem um the reeves superman punched like a girl which one george or superman i mean george or christopher Mike, you should draw Superman walking in a pro-life march. See who that riles up. That's probably a good idea. That's probably a good idea. Although I got stuff to do. I don't have time to just sit here. It's it's enough that I that I did the uh uh <laughs> that I called this stream DC Comics is gay. <laughs> That's enough of a, a troll to get. It is. It's a troll. I'll tell you. I, it's true. Um, uh oh, do it. Do it. Firestorm is a flamer. Literally. Literally. George was Reeves. Christopher was Reeve. All right, right, right. Uh, Christopher, powerless. He couldn't take out a 60 year old trucker. Hey, hey, hey. 60-year-olds got old man strength, all right? Don't don't hate. It's uh the stamina is not there, but the strength is. So it's like, you know, they get, they can condense all of their power into a few seconds of motion and then they're exhausted. It was like me moving that freaking couch today, man. Oh my gosh, just lifting that thing, I was holding it over my head for a while. So that because you had it had to be tilted inside the elevator because the elevator, the elevator in a storage unit wasn't big enough for this couch. So we had to tilt it up. And I had to hold it there while we changed floors. And like after we put it down and carried it to the truck, I was like, holy cow, man. Whew. Um, these pride branding are a waste of money. DC can keep them. <sighs> They're clearly not. I mean, honestly, the the it it's just not good business. I, I remember somebody was saying something today on um, on that cesspool Twitter uh, about about uh, marginalizing transgenders, and I'm like, transgenders are like one quarter of one percent of the population. If you can't marginalize that much of the population, my question is, why are we lionizing, or not we, they, why are they lionizing transgender? They're creating the entire, they're, they're trying to transform the entirety of our moral, our biological, scientific and our factual understanding of sex for one quarter of one percent of the population if that there's more trans the the the, the transgender uh what do you call it um what's it comparative representation transgender representation in media is probably like a thousand or two thousand or ten thousand fold what the trans actual transgender population is how i mean talk about a i don't want to call them insignificant people i mean it's an insignificant percentage of a population right they're not even a rounding error in a poll if you're doing a poll and you've got one quarter of one percent of the population uh, of the poll that's not even a that's not even the statistical that's margin. And yet somehow they have they have got in the entire society's panties in a wad for transgender. You you're a transphobe because because you're a man and you won't go out with a trans woman. 
Yeah. Because I'm straight. I hate to break it to all of you, but I don't care how feminine and beautiful you are as a trans woman. If there's a certain thing between your legs, no straight man wants that. That's called being straight. It's not hate. It's not bigotry. It's biology. It's science. It's normal, rational, factual thought. And it just, the fact that people can even attribute a, a malignant, uh, not malignant, malevolent thought, malevolent thought. Super straight, super straight. It <laughs> just, and and it's, a th it's another thing. It's not like it, was, uh, it wasn't a trans person saying this on, on Twitter. It was just another white knighting leftist. But that's the thing. It's it's you you tie the whole world up into a knot to try to make it look like people who have a, a religious moral foundation are hateful, evil bigots. That's That's the job, right? That's the deal. We're going to take this fractional, marginal, tiny percent of the population. And we're going to use that as a wedge to divide families from each other, brothers and sisters from each other, friends from each other. We are going to make it so that if you are on one side, you are on the side of the angels. And if you're on the other side, you are evil, hateful, bigoted Nazis. Because you wouldn't date somebody with a penis? <laughs> It's it's insanity on I don't know, man. It's it's insanity. It's freaking crazy to me. It is absolutely crazy. And uh, and yeah, DC Comics. Why are you cooking? Chase those woke bucks. Chase those woke dollars. I'm sure. AT and T will be like, "Wow, that was a that was a great financial decision for you to drive away the remaining Christian fans, moral fans, Muslim fans, uh, Mormon fans, Catholic fans, any traditional fan who's like, I don't, I'm so tired of this agenda being shoved down my throat. Now you want to shove it." down the throats of my kids through their comic books. Although, granted, no, not many kids read comic books anymore. Uh, missile toed, uh, missile toed. Correct. Truth is hate to those that hate the truth. Left or right, straight guys have a strict no junk policy for their ladies. That's right. That is called straight. It's straight, not hate. But that's the, that's the bizarre divisive mentality of the people on the left who are pushing this agenda, they want to say that if you won't, if you're a straight dude and you don't want a chick with junk, you're a transphobe. You're a hateful, you're a hateful, hateful bigot. Get on your knees and do I'm sorry. I can't. Ah. Uh. <laughs> All these identitarians are outright evil authoritarians. That's right. So long as they live, they will never stop trying to destroy everything to rebuild their own image. Uh, did he say chase those woke butts? No, no, no. Chase those woke bucks. W woke dollars. Dollar, dollar bills. You know, from all those woke people that they're not going to buy your comic, DC. They're not going to be like, oh, look, DC Comics is making all these gay pride month comic books. Let's all suddenly rush out and start buying comic books. No. Are you uh, I like my women twig and berryless. That is correct, Jay Hamilton. Uh, I don't want a man without the manly part. Super straight is the same for women, too. That's right, Calliope. That's right. LOL, Jeff. There's nothing gay about it. There's nothing gay about it. There's nothing gay about it.
Joe says, actually, the whole thing about being pro-trans gay is not, and the rest is not true. For example, the Communist Party had a policy against recruiting gays and people with vices. That's the old left, Joe. That's the old left. The new, the new left. It's um, it's not, it's not, it's cultural Marxism now. They're, they've shifted gears so that they can continue their Marxist ideology, uh, but using cultural divisions rather than economic divisions. So they have adopted, they have adopted the uh, LGBT agenda as one of the weapons they use to divide Americans and people around the world, you know, one against the other. Calliope says, Mike, breathe. Mike, breathe. Breathe. Yes. Sounded like behind to me. Woke people are too broke. Yes, and so will DCB soon. It's like they're trying to drive their stock prices down. I'm sorry, man. That Superman... That Superman image is just so freaking. Uh... All right, where did I? Oh, whoops. Uh, hold on a second. Let me mute myself. Um, I never really wanted to ever talk in detail about girls and junk. Fair enough. Did you get your spawn toy like Doug to Naple yet? I want one after seeing it. I didn't order a spawn toy. I've never been a fan of spawn. I was a I was a fan of uh, uh let, let's not get into spawn. Let's not get into that. Um they know they can use their vices to control you. Karen Hope says getting sick here, like watching Rawhide, reminds me of my dad. A hero, gaze, watch Rawhide and pray for deliverance. Nothing I don't know. Uh, I'm not familiar. I didn't watch Rawhide. Yesterday was foreskins. Today is junk. Well, you can't have junk. Well, I guess you can. Never mind. Uh, super straight has a super gay and super lesbian faction, too. People just do not want transgender politics forced into their bedroom. Or how about, yeah, their bathrooms? <laughs> That's it. What's it, Larry? What's it? What did I miss? What did I? What are you saying? What are you talking about? What you talking about, Larry? Uh, da, 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 da. let's check in here. No, that's good. Tune, 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 tune. Uh, so hey, everyone. So has DC officially been shut down? No, but they're trying everything they can to get it shut down. Ah, well, Red User is doing a Berserk Volume 1 review tonight. Go check out his channel, everybody. Kung Flu Kitty says, heard about the whole thing a few days ago. The reason why they don't want people from these groups is because most of them can't get over themselves. It's all about them. They don't care about the problems of the average citizen. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And that's that's why they... they like the reason the Marxists quit... Um, it's because class warfare doesn't really work in America because most Americans believe that if they work hard, they can become wealthy, right? Mm -hmm. The 1%, the 10% in America is not a static number. It's people are constantly moving in and out of the upper, upper, um, percentages percentiles uh and so because the people who so many people although they're doing such a good job of, of skewing this in the colleges but because so many people believe that they can become rich they don't want america and the system of capitalism and the system of the american dream being torn down and so that's why the Marxists had to move away from these, the, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, economic, the economic disparity model into the subdividing us by race, by sexual orientation, by perceived differences that they can, anything they can exploit to divide us rather than just you know letting us all get along we can all have differences i'm not i'm not telling dc they can't do gay comics go ahead 
nobody i don't do i think it's a wise business decision look man i'm an asian i'm japanese and i think it's a stupid business decision to to like try to focus on the japanese market in america right asians are four percent of the american population if suddenly if suddenly asians orientals were the put upon race or nationality whatever you want to how, however you want to phrase it the the the, the marginalized group suddenly that's four percent orientals were the marginalized group in america right the majority of america is white so if you're a business and you're like i want to make as much money as i can I'm gonna I'm gonna tailor all of my efforts towards getting the oriental market. That is a stupid business decision. And the, the homosexual population, the whole LGBT spectrum is like two and a half, maybe three percent of the population. So it's smaller than the Asian percentage of the population. And if I think it would be stupid to target Asians as your demographic, I mean, unless you're going for a niche market, that's fine. I'm I'm cool with that. And again, go with God. Do whatever you want. Whatever. It's a free country. I just think it's if you want a business decision that makes sense, I don't, I mean, you can have, you can in part target Asians. You can whatever. But the majority of the people in this country are white. Don't white Christians. That's the majority of the population. So what you don't want, even if you want to like, hey, I'm going to cater a little bit to this. Don't piss off the majority. Hold on. Go, go, go. Calliope says, Asians were discriminated against in the immigration policies of the USA for a long time. They could have a beef, but they choose to thrive 1000 percent true um until i believe the 1963 or 1965 civil rights act asians uh orientals to be specific because i'm sure if you were russian it wouldn't make a difference um weren't allowed to vote and this is this is national it's different states had different laws weren't allowed to vote or or the thing was that it wasn't national. Yeah, because it wasn't federal. So different states had different laws. Some states, you weren't allowed to vote. You weren't allowed to own property. Mm. Right? You essentially were treated as a non-citizen, even if you'd been there for four generations, five generations, six generations. Asians had it very, very unfair. You ever hear that? Do you ever hear... Asians complaining about that? Anything that happened prior to 1965? No. We don't. Nobody does. Hell, most Japanese don't even care about the internment camps, except for the new young woke ones. I talked to this kid. Well, not kid. He was my age. And um, <laughs> he was a third generation Japanese American. And he was telling me, he's like, he's like, yeah, my my uh, grandfather was in the uh, was in the the camps. And I'm like, I told him, I was like, well, just between you and me, Japanese, Japanese, the camps were a good idea, weren't they? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> Most rational Japanese people who understand the Japanese mentality that Hirohito regardless of if you are Japanese and living in America, for many, many Japanese, enough Japanese that it was a legitimate threat, Hirohito was God, right? Hey, huh? I told you to go outside and help mommy. Now, stop playing the game. I don't care if you die. Now. Um... 
yeah, and so we don't we don't care. I mean, no, it's not to say we don't care. It was a bad situation, it was a, but you know, it was because of the. Uh, um, geez, I wrote this into the mag. The Nihau was it? Ni? I can't remember what it was called now. But there was an incident in uh, after after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. A Japanese Zero landed, didn't die, right on one of the islands in Hawaii. The American Japanese citizens there protected him and took Hawaiians hostage because as soon as their people were on the ground, they turned on America because they were fiercely nationalistic for Japan. They believed Hirohito was God on earth. And so all these people, all these, anybody who's like, oh my gosh, Put, it was such a bad decision to put the Japanese in concentration. Bruh, no. Putting the Japanese in concentration camps, taking their property from them was bad. I mean, it was all it was all un in ideal, not ideal. But uh, and they should have all gotten their property back. That was the big screw job. But here's the thing: they all lost their property, right? They all lost their property. They're in concentration camps. The government took away their property, gave it to their neighbors. You hear anybody complaining about that? Uh, yeah, Bible time, Bible time, Bible time. Sorry, sorry. Don't get me on that particular subject because it's just the grievance, the grievance of leftists promoting a constant state of grievance it's just such poison for our country. And if you are a leftist, or even you consider yourself a liberal, and you are one of these grievance peddlers, you are poisoning your, your friendships, your family, and your country. Get over it. Get over it. Uh, Melissa says, you could make an argument for the internment camps being necessary for security. They did find spies this way. I still think taking their property shouldn't have happened. Agreed. Uh, what's up? So who's being gay right now? <laughs> Listen here, Mike's property is up for grabs. Hey, that is not what I said. Uh, all right, let's add this to the stream and get to the scriptures. Oh, how long is this chapter? <laughs> oh, good. All right. I got time. Let me uh, take a sw Let me hydrate a little bit here. Uh. Mm -hmm. All right. First Samuel chapter 19. And Saul. <laughs> mm. And Saul spake to Jonathan, his son, and to all his servants, that they should kill David. But Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted much in David. And Jonathan told David, saying, Saul, my father seeketh to kill thee. Now, therefore, I pray thee, take heed to thyself until the morning, and abide in a secret place, and hide thyself. And I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where thou art, and I will commune with my father of thee. And what I see, that I will tell thee. And Jonathan spake good of David unto Saul his father, and said unto him, Let not the king sin against his servant, against David, because he hath not sinned against thee, and because his works have been to thee, were the word, very good. Stone. Very good. For he did put his life in his hand and slew the Philistine. This, this I bet you... Jonathan mentioning that got under Saul's skin. He's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> and the Lord wrought a great salvation for all Israel. Again, yeah, I know. Thou sawest it. Yeah, I know. And did rejoice at the time. Wherefore, when wilt thou sin against innocent blood to slay David without a cause? And Saul hearkened unto the voice of Jonathan, and Saul sware, as the Lord liveth, he shall not be slain. Such a little liar. 
And Jonathan called David, and Jonathan showed him all those things. And Jonathan brought David to Saul, and he was in his presence as in times past. And there was war again, and David went out and fought with the Philistines and slew them with great slaughter, and they fled from him. And the man, David must have been one awesome warrior. You know, it's like people don't really uh, generally I, you think of David. You think of David like as king on the throne, you know, whatever. But boy, he was just out there. He was a legit man of war. He was out there just wrecking, wrecking. I mean, the, the, the stuff you hear from him, that's that's it's Samson level stuff. Right? David went out and slew 200 Philistines. Not with a jawbone of an ass, but... And the evil spirit from the Lord was upon Saul as he sat in his house with his javelin in his hand, and David played with his hand. And Saul sought to smite David even to the wall with the javelin, but he slipped away out of Saul's presence, and he smote the javelin into the wall. David fled and escaped that night. Saul also sent messengers unto David's house to watch him. Hey, boys, I'm reading the scripture. And to slay him in the morning. And, Dave, and Michal, uh, David's wife, told him, saying, If thou save not thy life tonight, tomorrow thou shalt be slain. So Michal let David down through a window, and he went and fled and escaped. Reminiscent of uh, Rahab and the, uh, the spies. And Michal took an image and laid it in the bed and put a pillow of goat's hair for its bolster and covered it with a cloth. And when Saul sent messengers to take David, she said, he is sick. And Saul sent the messengers again to see David, saying, bring him up to me in the bed that I may slay him. And when the messengers were come in, behold, there was an image in the bed with a pillow of goat's hair for its bolster. And Saul said unto Michal, why hast thou deceived me so and sent away mine enemy that he is escaped? And Michal answered Saul, He said unto me, Let me go. Why should I kill thee? So David fled. So she lied to Saul, cover her own tracks, but that's fine. So David fled and escaped and came to Samuel, to Ramah, and told him all that Saul had done to him. And he and Samuel went down and dwelt in Naioth. And it was told Saul, saying, Behold, David is at Naoth in Ramah. And Saul sent messengers to take David. And when they saw the company of the prophets prophesying and Samuel standing as appointed over them, the Spirit of God was upon the messengers of Saul, and they also prophesied. And when it was told Saul, he sent other messengers, and they prophesied likewise. And Saul sent messengers again, and the third time they prophesied also. So when he also to Ramah, he went, ah, then went he also to Ramah and came to a great well that is in Sehu and, be, and asked and said, where are Samuel and David? And one said, behold, they be at Naioth, Naioth in Ramah. And he went thither to Naioth in Ramah and the spirit of God was upon him also. Man, this might have been like the most powerful revival meeting, like the Holy Spirit just dropping on everybody that shows up. And he went on and prophesied until he came to Naioth in Ramah. And he stripped off his clothes also and prophesied before Samuel in like manner and lay down naked all that day and all that night. Wherefore they say, is Saul also among the prophets? Uh, this is interesting because before Samuel, I don't think that can't mean him literally there because I believe uh, Samuel didn't, didn't, well, he, what did it say? Did it say he didn't speak with him or didn't meet with him or didn't see him again until he, it was his, he was dying. Let's see, Samuel, Samuel 19, first Samuel 19, one Samuel 19. 
before then. Um, uh, not used in singular, facing Samuel, the face, property, the part turned toward any. Oh, well, here we go. Oof, that's a lot. Uh, the part towards towards anyone. C is equal for the root. Da, 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 da. To say and to do anything to anyone's face. Uh, to direct one's face or look towards someone. All right. All right, all right, all right. So, hmm. I'm trying to figure out how that works with uh, with the scripture that says that Samuel did not see... Is it Samuel didn't see Saul until the day of his death? But if... Clearly, there were a ton of people there because he kept sending people. So he might have just been in the crowd and then facing Samuel in the crowd because as it says, he sent... He sent messengers after messengers after messengers and they all ended up prophesying so uh to see david saying bring him in oh no not that that one da, 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 da. behold david is now uh they prophesied likewise all messengers the third time they prophesied also and then all the priests were prophesying so yeah it's possible samuel just didn't even bother he didn't see him or talk to him or anything like that but he was there. So, all right, that makes sense. David also danced in his birthday suit. Well, when the Bible says naked, I don't necessarily think it means right down to your birthday suit. It could very well mean you just take off your outer garments. I, I think. Here, you want to look that up too? <laughs> Let's look that up too, because I don't know. I just, it seems to make sense to me. Why is this on here? Go away. Mm. Naked at home. Uh, la, 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 la. Naked, Job 121, but naked is also used for ragged, badly clad. Uh, used a one who, having taken off his mantle, goes only clad in his tunic. Okay. So. Your mantle is, uh, from what I believe is true, uh, your mantle is the vestige of your office, right? So he's dressed as a king. It doesn't mean stark naked, right? It means removing, remove your mantle of authority, of office, whatever it is, and then you're just in your tunic. You're basic, Basically, you're just dressed like everybody else. You're not superior. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah, so they dance in their underwear. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Just not with their, their... It would be like if you're a general and you just took off your jacket with all your spangles and your dangles and your, your positions and everything and you just had your, uh, your butt, your collared shirt on, right? And then you just look like the Mormon guy next to you with the, the you know the tie and the <laughs> that makes more sense indeed indeed see that's why you gotta go and you gotta read because what the king james version means or what the king james version says it may be literal but it's uh, sometimes it's a little too concise right and so you gotta go and you gotta find out what the deeper meanings of the very words that you're reading are that is what doing a word study is about without formal trappings correct correct that probably means that the ladies also removed their makeup for what what are you talking about in in what oh you mean when they went naked <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Uh, 
Uh, uh, uh, Naked Prophets would be a cool name for a punk band. I call dibs. You got it. You got it. <laughs> then that's not really naked. Why use that word then? You'd have to ask the the King James. Look, I believe King James and his his scholars did as good a job as they could, but I don't believe that it was God, right? The original authorship is the breathed words of God. There's 300? How many languages are there? There's like 300 languages or 150 languages, something like that. Pro I don't know. Um, they're not all going to be perfect translations of the original ideas. That's why it's important to go back to the original languages, always. Whenever you have a question like this, you're like, was he really naked? Look it up. What does the word actually mean? And would it have been better for the King James translators to say he cast off the vestures of his authority? Yeah. I get, I get the feeling, though, instead of a 1,600-page Bible, if the King James people had, like, expounded on every single word, it would be like a 5,000-page Bible, and nobody would ever read it. Nobody, well, that's not true. Nobody would ever finish reading it because it's super... Hold on, let me turn my uh, notification sounds off. Bare Naked Prophets. Uh, when the ladies went naked in the King James Version since they removed their makeup is what I mean. I don't know when it's talking about when ladies went naked. I'm pretty sure when Bathsheba was described as being naked, I mean, she was literally taking a bath. So, uh, the Google says there are 7,000 languages. Are you sure there aren't like 700 languages and like 7,000 dialects of those languages? Is there 7,000 languages? That's crazy. That's so crazy. I mean, there's only a hundred and what is it, 138 countries? Is that right? How many countries are in the world? Oh, look, I have a phone. Funny thing about phones, you don't have to type. How many countries are in the world? 195. Here's a summary from Nations Online Project. I don't need a summary. There are now no, I don't, I don't, no. 195. There's only 195 countries and there's 7,000 languages? How is that even possible? <laughs> in India, says Vimri, there are more than 100 languages. Kidding. Wow. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? I'm sure Africa has a ton. But yeah. Yeah. You have to take into account all the Indian tribe languages and several different languages in India alone. Yeah, that's what he's just saying. Google says 7,000. That's still a ton of languages, man. That is a ton of languages. About half of the spoken languages on this planet originated from Borneo celebs. Every single sub-tribe has a distinct language. Hmm. Uh, uh, um... Uh, now let's not talk about places like China or Russia with their large expanse. Well, China, doesn't everyone either speak uh, Mandarin or... Um... Oh my gosh, I can't remember the other the other Chinese language. Drawing a, a blank, drawing a blank. China has 10 languages, not just Mandarin? Whoa. Whoa. That's crazy. But they all have the same written language. They all use the same written language. They just have different dialogue, dialectical. I don't know. Uh, Cantonese, 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 Cantonese. Yes, everyone is like, <laughs> I need to say it first. Cantonese. Thank you. <laughs> Mandarin is a state language. All right, cool. All right, we got about five minutes left. So while I was doing my night trading last night, I did at least get uh, get most of the pencils done for the next page of Lone Star. So Lone Star page 42. Again, if you want to support good comics, not DC comics, 
because they're gay. Uh, then you want to go ahead and go to LoneStarComic.com and support me as a creator. Thank you very much. Papua New Guinea. What? Papua New Guinea has 852 languages. Are there even 852 people in Papua New Guinea? What, do they all make up their own languages? 42 of 48. Yes. I'm combining two of the pages into one. Uh, so... So I won't have to bump up to 49. If I bump up to 49, I was thinking about it and, and then being like, you know, if I do that, then I can have like some cool add-on stuff in the back, make it a 56 pager. But I mean, it hasn't even broken $30,000. So I don't want to, I don't want to go crazy on the price of stuff. Have you finalized shadow of the conqueror yet? Uh, that's not, I haven't. No. Uh, Dave, our letterer, is going back and making corrections that Shad... I have the PDFs. I have all the pages. So what happened was I wrote it. Um, or, okay. Shad, Shad wrote the novel, obviously. I wrote the adaptation. Um, then it got lettered. And now the lettering is going... Went to Shad. And now Shad's going in and adding letter. <laughs> adding... Adding stuff that he thinks he's basically he's he's acting as the editor. So he's going in and he's edit adding stuff, but he's doing it like on Photoshop. So now it's got to go back to Dave, and then Dave's got to re-letter it back in all the original fonts and make it all make it all pretty. And then I don't know if we'll if we're waiting for the final color round to do the preliminary books. It'd be interesting to do. Prelim. Ah, oh, this is all stupid business stuff. Anyways. Soon, 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 soon. So it's down to word choice. So off to the trail printer trial. Trail? Printer's next. Uh yes. If if we go with the colors as is, otherwise we're waiting for color corrections. Mm, I learned the other day that in Mexico, there's still people that speak the Mayan language. Yeah, there's a bunch of language. That's true. Mexico has still has a bunch of languages. Um, and, and local dialects and stuff, too. Interesting. Trial, yes. Uh, Dark Admiral, all right. Gav, a good one yourself. We got two minutes left. Any other, any, any last minute prayer requests or anything like that? What's up, Frank? How you doing? <sighs> Doc Savage speaks Mayan. Very good, very good. Kung Fu says, glad I could catch this stream. Got a new job, so I've been a little busy. Missed you all. Thank you. Glad to have you here, Kung Fu Kitty. Da, da, da. Many King James Version translation problems originate with the differences in English over 400 years of linguistic change. Yeah. And look, I get why a lot of younger, new, new, you know, people don't like to use the King James version because it's more, you know, old English and the. You know, I just think that adds to the poetry of the language. Personally, I like Shakespeare. I like old English um, writing. So it's 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 poetic to me. It's poetic, and and it is very word for word. It's very honest translation even though yeah there are errors and you know it ain't perfect ray thulu puts up the shadow of the conqueror pre-launch page thank you very much uh, people in south in the south speak a bazillion different dialects of english china has used the same written language because that's the state-sponsored written language and that simplified chinese traditional chinese is very different um you mean original Chinese? Because the Chinese language is the oldest constant written language on planet Earth. It goes back 4,500 years, almost all the way back to Babel. And the gospel is hidden in the Chinese language, which is very cool. Uh, da, 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 da. Can I get a prayer to unlock the strength to chase my dreams? Absolutely. Father God, kind wizard has a prayer request. 
and I think it's a prayer request that uh, that applies to everyone, everybody. Um, Father, give us all the strength, the tenacity, the faith to follow your visions and dreams for us. Give uh, give us visions, give us dreams, give us purpose uh, to use our time, our talent, our treasure uh, to further your kingdom and to be a blessing in this world and to turn people towards you always. Uh, we are here with a purpose, Father. Uh, some of us have a hard, harder time understanding that purpose. But ultimately, ultimately, however we use our time, our talent, our treasures, it is in glory to you, Father. And help us to always remember that and help us to be diligent in seeking that direction from you. And uh, yeah, in Jesus' name, amen. And we're out of time. God bless you guys. Thank you all for being here. We will uh, be back, I don't know, tomorrow night or something. I'm tired, so I'm, I'm not going to go to bed. It's too early to go to bed, but I don't know. I'll check what the market's doing. <laughs> God bless you all. We'll see you next time on uh, Cross-Examinations. How can we get back on the right track?